Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and I'm here for Premier Guitar and today I'm going to be taking a look at five ways to get your bends a little bit more under control, a little bit more purposeful and to make them sound a little bit more vocal. Now, one thing I've really made a conscious effort to do in recent times is to expand my musical horizons and really push the outer limits of where I draw my influences from. And for me personally, this has primarily involved listening to all the great vocalists that I grew up listening to as a kid, listening to their inflections, the idiosyncrasies and the character within their voice, the way they approach notes and the way they fall off notes primarily, and in some small way trying to emulate that on the guitar. Now, outside of playing slide guitar, the easiest way to do this is going to be through bending. So, as I said, today's video focuses is on a few little tips, techniques and tricks to try and make your bands a little bit more purposeful and a little bit more vocal sounding. Let's delve right in. So my first bit of advice is going to be to intonate your bends properly, by which I mean make sure that you're bending to the desired pitch. Now this may seem like a fairly obvious sort of assertion to make, but if the sheer number of players who I see who just seem to be guessing, to be honest, when it comes to how far or how wide they're bending, it does definitely worth repeating. Now this a lick at 34 seconds into the intro clip on this video, which sounded a little bit like this. <laughs> So I've chosen this lick because it's a particularly good example when it comes to intonating your bends in that if you overbend or underbend even, it's going to sound horrific. So having a good appreciation of what notes it is that you're trying to hit can really help uh, you hit this nail on the head. So without bending any of the notes, the notes in which we are aiming for are these. Now, obviously, that's not as exciting as if we are bending the note, but understanding which pitches you're aiming for can really help give you a better understanding. So when it comes to bending that, you're going to be hitting the desired pitches, and not falling short or overshooting the mark. Now, just to quickly look at that bend, we're going to be starting off on your 10th fret of your B string with a full step bend. for that little addition of the half step bend, for then releasing momentarily and going back up to a full step bend. For again, releasing back down your 10th fret and then pulling off or just hitting the string again on the 8th fret on your B string. Now, as I said, making sure that you hit all of those pitches correctly is integral to this lick. And for that reason, hopefully, it's a good little example to make sure that you really are pitching your bends correctly. Now, the second tip I wanted to talk about is the speed at which you execute your bends. Now, David Gilmore has always been an incredible exponent of this technique, and it really is something that a lot of people assume is set in stone, I guess. The speed at which you execute your bend doesn't seem to change for a lot of people. However, this a lick at 52 seconds into the intro clip, which sounds a little bit like this. Now, in principle, this is a very simple bend. I'm bending from my 20th fret on my B string up to an A note, obviously resolving to that root note. As I said, it's a very simple bend. However, in really taking my time over that and dragging it out adds a sense of tension, a sense of drama and expectation, really making the listener wait for what's coming next. And when I finally get there, it's all the more pleasing because of it. Now, tip number three is in regard to the vibrato in which you may or may not add to bends. Now, one thing I'm always very keen to stress with vibrato is that it is an effect and should only really be used as such. And what I mean by that is when it is effective. This is something that guitar players, we can be a little bit guilty of adding vibrato to everything, but again, taking inspiration from singers, great singers, whether we're talking Paul Rogers or Whitney Houston, listeners to their vibrato, they don't always apply it to a note. And when they do, it's tastefully and artfully applied, more often than not towards the end of the note when you get that natural waver in the human voice. Now this lick at 12 seconds into the intro clip, which sounds a little bit like this. Now, the reason I wanted to use that for reference is, again, that's a very simple bend. We're bending from the 7th fret on your G string up to the 9th fret. And adding absolutely no vibrato. Now, again, as I said, this is personal taste. You can add vibrato if you want, but it's nice to mix it up. That variation is key and not always using the same effect is essential to giving a varied and dynamic performance. 
And number four is in regards to the speed of your vibrato. Now, ultimately, everyone's vibrato is different, and one man's meatloaf is another man's poison, as they say. So I'm not going to lecture anyone in that respect. However, as with vibrato placement, variation of which is key, so is the speed at which you execute vibrato. Again, it's not set in stone and can really vary depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, if we go back to the intro clip, the very first lick is hopefully a good uh, example of what I'm trying to get across. <laughs> Now, obviously, this particular example isn't in relation to bending. However, it can be applied to bends to great effect. The lick itself was very simple. I was sliding from my 8th fret to my 10th fret on the B string, initially with very little, if no, vibrato, which then increased in speed and intensity. Again, much the same effect as earlier, leading the listener with anticipation in regard to what is coming next. <laughs> Now, last but not least, tip number five is more of a practical bit of advice than anything in regard to really and genuinely familiarizing yourself with your guitar and your chosen gauge of strings. Now, this is a Yamaha Revstar with 11 gauge strings on it. I've used this guitar a hell of a lot live and for recording, so safe to say I'm pretty familiar with it at this point, but there is a foolproof way of being able to tell whether you really know your guitar. Take a relatively simple lick like this. and pre-bend to those notes. Not just bend to them, we can all bend, fool ourselves that we knew roughly where to stop. By pre-bending, there is absolutely nowhere to hide, and if you're not pitching your bends correctly, you will absolutely know about it. Now, in that case, I was bending from my 10th fret, obviously with a kind of step and a half bend to start off with, and then working my way down in increments. So we had the 13th fret to the 10th, uh, the 12th fret, sorry, to the 10th fret to the 8th fret. As I said, by pre-bending, there really is nowhere to hide. Cheers guys, I'm Chris Buck, you're watching Premier Guitar, thank you very much for watching, hopefully see you soon.